All right, what is up, guys? And welcome back to another Black Desert Online Gear Guide. We're going to be going all the way through the progression of the game from start to finish in game. So if you're a mid-tier player, you're brand new to the video game, or you've been playing for six years and you're looking for your options, this is definitely the guide for you. Just make sure I haven't updated it. I have to update it every few months. There's some, been some big changes to the game, which we're going to talk about in this guide um, as we get into it here. But uh, let's go ahead and get started. In Black Desert Online, this is what your gear wheel looks like, completely empty. We'll go through each of the slots so you know what they are. I know it seems really confusing at first, but I promise it's not that bad. Okay. You have your standard. Um, you have your, your gloves, your boots, your chest piece. Okay. And you have your helmet. All right. That's your armor set. Okay. So we talk about armor. We talk about those four pieces. And you have your accessories. You have two rings. You have two earrings. You have your necklace. And you have your belt. Okay. And it's really just that simple. What about all the other stuff? We don't go there, Simba. Those are the dark places, okay? Um, you have three weapons in the game, okay? Main hand, awakening, and offhand. This is your main hand weapon here. This is awakening weapon here in the middle. And this is your offhand weapon, okay? Uh, you also have an alchemy stone, all right? Right in the middle here. And these are artifacts, which we're going to talk about a little bit later with light stones. Okay, artifacts with light stones. Okay. Um... I wouldn't worry too much about what all this stuff is like like this is like an adventure like you're gonna get this right away you just kind of equip it no big deal don't really worry about that uh and this is where the life skill tools go you don't have to worry about that either no big deal okay and then these are like your outfits so like what outfit you're wearing and how your character looks okay which is that is very important very very important okay so starting out in the game you're gonna spawn in it you're gonna start going through there's gonna be this little black ball that appears in front of you he's really annoying but like just i prompt just do what he says okay get through the main storyline all right you got to get through the main storyline i highly recommend ancient stone chamber i do have a beginner guide if you guys want to go check that out i'm not going to get into the specifics of that we're going to focus on the gear here okay as you go through the main storyline you're going to get something called naru gear okay it's just going to give this to you as quest rewards this is garbage that you're going to turn into actual usable equipment okay you need this stuff you need this stuff now, the game is also the game seasonal character. Yes, we, we we talked about seasonal characters in my beginner guide. You need to make sure you make a seasonal character. I'm not getting into all that. I'm just assuming that you're smart enough to have made a seasonal character at this point. If your question is, should I go back and make a seasonal after I've already it up? The answer is yes, but you're just as much of a f as your parents told you you were when you were growing up. Um, okay. The main story quest line is also going to give you Naru accessories. Okay. It's very important that you understand these are garbage. Okay. This is complete garbage. You don't even, you just throw those in the dumpster. No one gives a shit. Okay. Your friends will make fun of you. If you enhance them, even for a moment, everyone's going to make fun of you. Don't even use those. They're, they're terrible. They, they set you back. I don't even know why they're still in the game. That being said, you're also going to get Naru weapons. These are good. Okay. This is a witch, by the way. Okay. Um, is there no Naru awakening weapon? I guess not. Okay. All right. So it's going to give you your two weapons. You're not going to get your awakening because by the time you hit... That's right. By the time you hit level 56 and do your awakening quest line, it's going to give you Pride to Vala awakening weapon, which is like way better than Naru. Anyway. Okay. Um, so... This is what you're going to get as you go through the main story. Again, don't use Naru accessories. You're going to use Tuvala accessories. Tuvala. Tuvala. Good. Okay. Naru bad. Okay. It is good. In terms of accessories, this is how it works. All right. This is how it works. Now, eventually, you're going to hit these to pen. This is really easy. Do not use fail stacks. Just click it until it goes. Okay. You're going to open the enhancement window. Bada bing, bada boom. They're just going to go straight to pen. It's going to make it seem like enhancing is super easy. Just succeed. Okay. That's all it is. All right. You're going to get pen Naru. The game is going to prompt you to turn your Naru gear into Tuvala. It's like a little, little tab. You'll open your inventory and there'll be a little button like right here. Um, like right here next to your inventory window. Okay. And the game will ask you if you want to convert to Tuvala. You absolutely do. Okay. Okay, so it's going to give you Tuvala, Pry Tuvala. Pry Tuvala. Um, what do you enhance the Naru with? Beginner Blackstones. 
Okay. There's only one type of beginner black stones. You cannot f this up. You cannot, you can't literally cannot mess it up. It will literally try to put the black stones in there for you. Just open the enhancement window with this little next to the letter M on your M is in Mary. You just open the, open that and click enhancement. Easy peasy. Okay. Now we have pry to Vala across the board. Okay. You're also going to start accumulating Tuvala accessories. Oh my God. Tuvala accessories. Tuvala accessories are actually useful. Okay. And the game is going to give you a couple. So I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of these in here. I think they give you a pen Tuvala ring and a pen Tuvala earring for just finishing your seasonal log. Okay. There's a seasonal like icon up here in the top right. When you click on it, um, I'm not on a seasonal character right now, so I can't see it. Um, here, you know what? I'll just hop over to my, my Maywa real quick. This is my seasonal character. The reason it looks better than yours is because I know how to make better characters than you. Okay. She's way more attractive than any character that you have made. And you're just going to deal with it in the top right of your screen. Seasonal pass. Okay. Seasonal pass. Also, the reason she's more attractive than all of your characters is the fact that she's a Maywa. Okay. She's a walking L, but she's prettier than the other characters in the game as a whole. Okay. All right. This is going to pull up this window here. All you do is you just keep doing stuff in the in the main story. As you do the main story, you'll progress through this. You'll see that you can get... Um, why is my, my mouse is all messed up? There we go. You're going to get beginner black stones. This is what they look like. This is what you're going to enhance your Naru gear, okay? Uh, by the way, if you need help choosing your class or whatever, I have choose your class guides for that. I have a beginner guide as well. You guys check that out. There's plenty of guides. I have a guide for everything. All right, for crystals, artifact, everything, everything you need. Okay. So eventually you're going to get one pen to Vala earring, one pen to Vala ring. How do I get the other two Vala accessories? Really simple. As you start grinding on seasonal, you're going to get something called time filled stones. They look like this, these purple little gems. You're using these for everything. These are what you enhance all two Vala with accessories and otherwise. Okay. You're going to run down to the blacksmith with your beautiful character. You're going to click on him. Okay, uh, ex you click exchange in the bottom left right here. Okay, and then this window is going to pop up. You'll notice that you can exchange two time filled stones for another two Vala helmet, but it's a base. Okay, we'll get into why that's important in a second. Okay, but you can also, here's all the accessories right here. So this is how you get the accessories. 10 time filled stones per one accessory. Okay, and this is where most of your time filled stones are probably going to go. Okay, and then in order to enhance them here, I'll just do it real quickly here. I'll just, um... Uh, I'll, I'll enhance 50 of these things or 15 of these real quick. So basically you just open the enhancement window. It's just really simple. Click enhance like everything else that you've done so far. You do not need to use fail stacks until it hits about try, but you're more than welcome to. You kind of just click it. Oh my God. Understand that if accessories fail, it blows up like it's about to. There it goes. You know, they're dead. Okay. I got to start from nothing again. Okay. There we go. Okay. I'm terrible at the game. There we go. You see, you just hit it right up to do it. And then you hit it right up to try because you're a unit at this point at try okay you you need to go to tet and you need to go to pen there's try duo try tet pen all right three lines is try you want the i v is tet v is pen you want pen okay um how you want to go about doing that's up to you i recommend putting in a fail stack or two i personally don't use any fail stacks on these but like also the season pass is going to give you one free Pen to Vala accessory. I recommend making that your necklace or your belt. Okay. Necklace or the belt, and it'll give it to you at pen. You're good to go. It's a guaranteed tet to pen enhancement. So, like, all you have to do is get it to tet, and then you can guaranteed enhance it to pen. Really, really simple. Really, really simple. Okay. Um, I will go ahead and use a fail stack for posterity stake here, advice uh, of the Valk, so that I can demonstrate what it looks like. Um, if you're a new player, I will use a 20 stack. Um, for those of you that don't know what fail stacks are, all they are is like every time you fail, this number right here goes up and your enhancement chance of success the next time you click goes up. Okay, so you have fail stacks. If I open up this, you can see I have a big 176 stack. Oh my God, that would be a mistake. Okay, but you see how much higher the enhancement is. Okay. Oh, great. Okay, but it's about knowing which fail stack to use on which enhancement. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and put a 20 stack in here. You'll notice it's it's at 50% because 
theoretically I've failed 20 times already. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and click this. Yeah. I'm just bad at the game. There's nothing I can do about it. Okay. Um, so I put this in here and then we start from nothing again and we just click. Okay. All right. There we go. Okay. That's how you enhance the Tuval accessories. All right. But eventually you're going to want full pen Tuval accessories. All right. You get more time filled stones by doing seasonal, um, and just grinding on seasonal and doing weeklies and stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and pin out your accessories now and just assume that we're up to, we're up to speed. We are up to speed here. Okay. Right around this time, you're going to be hitting level 60 as well. I'm going to make this level 62 just for posterity's sake. Okay. All right. At this point, you can see your gear. Oh my God. Look how big a oh, number up. Good. Oh, wow. This is incredible. Okay. So, um, you're also going to have to pen this gear too. And to be clear, you should always do your weapons first, then your armor, then your accessories. Okay. You can leave your accessories at like duo or try for a while, but you need to get your weapons to pen basically as fast as possible. Fortunately for you, the game hands you try to Vala for free. It's literally free. You don't even have to use fail stacks. You just click it and it goes. Okay. But hitting tat and pen is as simple as just clicking the button till it finishes. Okay. Um, boom, boom, bam, bam. Okay. So now we've got full pen to Vala. Okay. You're wondering, how do I get a good alchemy stone? What's going on? What happened? There's something in the game called a Tor's power stone really easy what's the solution remember that really annoying black ball that you keep talking to when you this guy right here yeah i get it okay he's annoying but in this main quest right here if you scroll down and you haven't done it yet there's going to be something called the ulakita quest line if you hit o you can click on main if i unhide completed ulakita should be somewhere down here there it is right here the ulakita quest line you do this quest line 76 quests i know more questing me right um no problem at the end of it it's going to give you your best in slot alchemy stone okay not for end game but you're going to sit on this alchemy stone for quite a while okay bada bing bada boom it has one flat sheet ap on it it can be re it can be gassed back up so you can once it runs out of durability you can gas it back up again the spirit stones you can't do that okay um at the end of seasonal you will have your awakening weapons so i'm just going to put the two vala Okay, bam. I'm just gonna put the Tuvala weapon in here, okay? At the end of seasonal, Fugar is gonna ask you what rewards you wanna take. It's very important that you have the correct amount of chromosomes when choosing this option, okay? Okay, we talked to Fugar. You click season special gift, okay? There's gonna be a lot of different choices, okay? I know what a lot of players are gonna choose, okay? A lot of players are going to be like, oh, Perilla Star. Oh, oh, very good. Perilla Star. No, 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 not good. Don't do that. Stupid people choose this one. Okay. This one also dumb. No go. It no go. I'm too, the Mystics and Strikers can understand now too. I'm thinking, right? Okay. You want the necklace. Okay. You're going to pick the necklace. You're going to pick the necklace on your first time through. Your question is, well, can I go back and get the other ones? You absolutely can. You're going to get another season pass. You're going to go back. You're going to run through, sprint through seasonal on another character, and you're going to get the belt too. Okay. This one right here. Easy peasy. All right. So you sprint through seasonal on a second character. You've got two pen capoches. You're off to the races. Okay. Right, here's your pen capotion necklace. Here's your pen capotion belt. And every once in a while, they give you extra seasonal coupons. You can go back and get the other shit too. Okay. Uh, Perillus is a phenomenal alchemy stone, but you definitely don't want to use it over A-Tours, especially early on. Okay. <laughs> but it will keep me alive in PvP. No, it won't, Timmy. You're dead. No one cares. Um, so, early on, they're going to give you something called artifacts. You just want to use extra AP against monsters. Okay. I'm just going to keep this super simple. You want to get two of the extra AP against monsters. And what do I put in here, Blue? They're called predations. Okay? You put a predation. Actually, that. You're going to put combats in here. You're going to put combats in here. Combats give you combat EXP. It gives you, when you have four light stones in here, it gives you a set effect. In this case, it's three 
100% combat EXP. If you're wondering, oh my God, how do I get that? It's really hard to get. You just go to the marketplace. They're really cheap, okay? You can have them basically instantly. You can do this right away. And if you're trying to get in front of your friends who are also playing the game, but didn't watch their gu this guide because they're losers, okay? They won't have this advantage. You'll have this advantage on them because you can open this. You buy four of these right here. You just buy four of these. Okay? Right click them while you're in your, there. You put them in your inventory, right click them. It'll ask you if you want to put them in your, in your artifacts. You just bam, 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 slot them in, easy peasy. Okay, 300% combat EXP. You'll find yourself leveling up way faster than your friends. Easy peasy, okay? Um, now you can see that the gear wheel, it's really not that intimidating. It started to fill out, okay? We're at 559 gear scores, it's great, okay? Um, at this point, um, the game, you need to start AFK fishing, okay? Your AFK time in the game all needs to be fishing, all right? You need to get coelacanths, okay? Coelacanths. In the top right of your screen up here, this little chest thing is very important, okay? There are these fish, these little gray plump coelacanth fishies, okay? You're going to catch these anywhere in the world. You can fish anywhere in the world. It doesn't have to be anywhere crazy, okay? All right? But if you get enough of these, and you get 75 of these bad boys, you get another pen kaposha. That's right. You get a guaranteed pen kaposha because the game will give you in your Y menu... You hit Y, as in Yggdrasil, if you understand that reference, you're a specimen, okay? The game is going to give you a try um, Kaposha. I don't know where it is, completed. Here it is. It's gonna give you a try Kaposha for free of your choosing. I probably got mine like way back here. I don't know where the f is. Yeah, right here. Okay, you need to choose either the ring or the earring, okay? Because you already have the belt and the necklace, okay? And if you choose incorrectly, it's fine. You can always go to Fugar and he will, you, you can trade the earrings and the rings back, back and forth. It doesn't matter. Okay. So like if you pick incorrectly, it's not that big of a deal. Okay. But like you pick a ring. I, I recommend the ring early on until you have the, the Jatinas, which we're going to talk about here in a second. Uh, and then you can roll it over to the earring as you need it. Okay. Um, who is Fugar? The ugliest looking you have ever seen in your entire life. He's right here. Okay. If you just type in ugly into the NPC search bar right here, all right, he's in every single major town, okay? Fugar, okay? This is where he happens to be in Velia. In Heidel, he's like down here by the stable keeper, right here, okay? You're gonna get a, we're, we're gonna pretend that you got your, your third Kaposha, okay? From fishing, easy peasy, okay? The next thing you're gonna start to do is you're gonna start actually grinding, okay? You're probably gonna start grinding for your infinite potion. Now you're gonna start learning the systems of the game. Awesome, guess what? I have an infinite potion guide. It shows you how to do, and also the infinite potion guide also goes over all those seasonal spots that have daily quests or weekly quests. It shows you where all the rotations are. It shows you where, like, which ones are the most efficient, where you should be going. I'm just saying it's really good. Okay. Really, really solid. And if you're talking about Gahas or Centaurs, I have guides for those too. You can check those out. Okay. I don't care where you grind. At this point, you've started to grind. Okay, so you're going to start making silver, which is great. Okay, you can start actually getting gear progress. You're going to start doing your guaranteed pens. Also, you're going to get a free Tet Black Star when you graduate. You're also going to get a free pen Black Star at somewhere around this point. You're going to have your free Tet, your free pen. Blue, which ones do I take and where do I put them? Excellent question. If you are a succession class, okay, um, I'm not going to go into Succession or Awakening. I'm assuming that you know what those are at this point. If you don't know, look at my Choose Your Class Guide. Okay, Succession uses their main hand weapon. Okay, so if you are a Succession class, all right, you need to pick the pen main hand weapon. Okay, this would be a pen Black Star Staff. All right, done. Okay, and then you pick the Tet Awakening weapon. Okay. If you are an Awakening class, you need to pick the Pen Awakening weapon and the Tet Main Hand weapon. Okay? Dramatically different. If you find yourself wearing a Pen Black Star offhand, please uninstall the game and go play Maple Story. That is the next step in your gear progression because you are too stupid to be playing this game. Okay? So, this is how you short out which Black Star you actually need to be using early on in the game okay very very simple very very simple they're gonna give you this shit for free all right now we're gonna talk about the guaranteed systems in the game 
that give you your next gear upgrades, all right? And you should be doing this from basically minute one that you start the game. You should try doing these, okay? Um, there's this woman called Jatina right here. She's in every single major town. This happens to be where she is in, in Velia right here, okay? But she's in Heidel too. You can just type Jatina into the search bar up here. Just Jatina. You can see she's everywhere, okay? This bitch is everywhere. You talk to her, she's going to have quests for you, okay? First of all, you're going to be able to exchange your Tuvala for Tet boss gear, okay? Great, awesome. You're going to do that, all right? You're going to exchange all your Tuvala for Tet boss gear, all right? And you're going to start doing her guaranteed pen quests, okay? Um, I'm just going to roll with... I'm just going to roll with DR. Well, actually, you know what? We're going to pretend we're an Awakening Witch, okay? Awakening Witch is an evasion class, as we're going to get into in about... 10 seconds. Okay. Blue, which, which gear set should I choose? Okay. This is really controversial. This is really controversial. First of all, when you do your Magnus quest line, okay. When you're doing your Magnus uh, quest line, oh, you need to be using red nose. Okay. Magnus is going to give you one free pen. It is always red nose. Always. If you pick anything else, you f***ed up, but it's not completely the end of the world, okay? It's not going to cost you a tremendous amount, but it is going to set you back a few billion. But, like, you need to pick Red Nose. It's it's a lot less coffers to enhance, and if you just get it at pen for free, it's way better than the Dim Tree Wrap, okay? Um, if you picked one of the other pens, it's not the end of the world. Just understand, you need to understand whether your class is the evasion or damage reduction. This is the point in your guild, or in, in your gear, or when you're going to talk to Jatina for the first time, or like when you're starting to decide what gear you're going to get, this is where you need to understand the gear concepts of the game. Every class is either considered a damage reduction class or an evasion class. I will explain the basic concepts of both. In damage reduction, the idea is that you have a big health pool. Everything, all incoming damage is going to hit you. Everything is going to hit you. Um but it's all gonna do less damage, okay? The entire idea behind evasion, although there's a lot of, they've changed a lot that has to go with damage reduction and evasion. I'm trying to explain this at a fundamental level so that people understand how this works, okay? The fundamental idea behind evasion is you're just gonna build a lot of evasion and all the incoming attacks are gonna make an accuracy check and they're either gonna, if they miss you, they don't hit you at all. If they hit you, they're, they're Baja blasting you. Okay, damage reduction, everything hits you, everything does less damage. Evasion, some stuff hits you, some doesn't. Ends up being about the same thing. They've changed how these things work in a recent patch, but this is basically like the fundamental concepts for a new player so that you understand. Okay, it's important to understand also that there are a lot of players that have strong feelings about how to build your class. Okay, and what you should be building on your class in the current metagame. It's important to understand that these people have mental illness. Okay. There are a lot of idiots that play Black Desert Online. Okay. You're not going to be an idiot. What I'm going to tell you in this guide is what the developers intend for your class to be. So if your class was intended to be an evasion class, I'm going to tell you to build evasion on that class. Okay. And if your class was intended to be a DR class, I'm going to tell you to build DR. Now, depending on what patch it is and what time of year it is and what metagame we're in, certain people could just tell you, DR is the only way. You should never be building evasion. You're an idiot, blah, blah. Those are the people with mental illness. That's how you spot them, okay? Because they're trying to tell you how to do something that isn't actually impacting you, all right? Building DR and building evasion doesn't matter until you really kind of hit the end game, but you have to do it correctly early game or you fuck everything up, okay? So, like, what they're concerned about is the really late game, end game, metagame, where, like, okay, yeah, DR is technically on current patch as of August 14th, 2024. DR is definitely better than Evasion in PvP. For sure, right now. But that changes week to week. Next week, the developers might be like, all right, we're going to buff the crap out of Evasion. It swings back and forth all the time. So those same people that have mental illness, like the people with all caps in my chat right now, um, are going to just like one day, they're like, oh, you need to build evasion. You're crazy. And then the next day, oh my God, DR. Oh my God, you have to build DR. Don't listen to these stupid people. Okay. You need to build what your class was intended to be built with, 
by the developer. Okay, and that's exactly what I'm gonna explain to you now. I'm gonna go through each class in the game. I'm gonna tell you whether they're DR or evasion. Um, because they it has changed. If you're looking at my old gear guides, it's different now. They have changed it. Some classes shifted. They that they, they've never done that before, but here we are. Um, okay, damage reduction. Okay. This is evasion. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we even have drawing emotes in the chat. Uh, okay, so we're going to go with uh, Witch first. Okay, Witch. Has evasion passives. Okay, if you're... I'm going to make this really simple for you. If your class has evasion passives, you should be building evasion on that class. It's literally just that simple. Okay. They're basically exactly identical in terms of how much damage you're going to do with your accuracy. It used to be different. It used to be that damage reduction gave you more accuracy in your build innately. It is not like that anymore. Now, damage reduction and evasion, you have the same amount of accuracy either way. So again, and people are going to go all kinds of crazy with this, okay? People are going to try to yank you every which way. I'm just spouting the facts based on what your class passives are. I'm telling you what to do, okay? You'll notice that the majority, they've shifted this. The last time I made this list, damage reduction was much more heavily, like, like there were more classes that were DR than evasion. Now there's more classes that are evasion than DR, in theory. Um, this is how you're supposed, this is how you're supposed to build these classes, okay? Um, it's important to understand that evasion classes built with DR are much more viable than the reverse, okay? A lot of DR classes that you try to build evasion on, it's probably not going to work. It's probably not going to work. But if you try to build DR on a Mewa, it's not the end of the world. But if you try to build evasion on a warrior, you're going to get made fun of by all the other warriors. Okay. Like, so like the road does not run both ways in this case. So there are a lot of evasion classes in the game. I will recommend that if you're on the fence or you know you're a chronic reroller, I'm going to go ahead and recommend that you build DR even though evasion is technically has more classes in it, the simple fact of the matter is you can play those evasion classes with damage reduction and not be as hindered as the reverse situation. Okay. So this is basically, this is basically where did I, I didn't miss any classes, right? We're good. Yeah, this is it. This is the list that everybody wants to see. Okay. If you are an evasion class, all right, if you're on this right list, you are building Liebers and Muskins, okay? The Muskins are your boots. The Liebers are your gloves, okay? If you are on this left side, you're a damage reduction class. You're going to build Begs. And you're going to build um, Uragons. As many people call it, Uugans, okay? I don't personally like that name, but here we are, okay? This is your glove slot. This is your This is your boot slot. Okay, that's how it works. That's how it works. Everything else, what about my helmet? What about my chest piece? Doesn't matter. They're all roads lead to the same place on that one. So without getting into too many specifics, these are the only choices that you have to make. This is 50-50. If at any point you find yourself building a Begs Gloves with Muskin shoes or a Liebers with Uragon shoes, please stop. Wait. You're a parental f Go play Maple Story. I promise you will have better time, uh, a better time, okay? I promise you will have a better time. Okay, um, D, get out. Can't say stuff like that. Okay, so that's how you separate whether or not you're gonna play evasion or whether or not you're gonna play DR. Okay, all right. Now we're at the point where, okay, we've chosen a path. I'm an Awakening Witch which has evasion passives, we're going to build evasion on which. Okay. If you do fuck up which and you happen to build DR, it's not going to be the end of the world. But like, you do definitely want to try to stay on the path that you're supposed to build in the first place. Okay. This is what the developers are going to recommend. This is what I recommend. Okay. Um, Jatina has these guaranteed pens that you can make so you can, without having to enhance yourself, you can get your name on all of your gear without actually having to, to enhance it yourself. Okay. It's going to be a guaranteed pen going to take you a little time. She's going to have weekly quests for you to do every week. You have to turn in latent Rs. Okay? Latent Rs. They look like this. Um, you get these from doing world bosses and doing your dark rift bosses. Okay? Um, 
you only need to give two of them to her at a time as far as i'm aware and now that it allows you to exchange for multiple at a time so you can turn in two late naras i believe for the weekly and get like 155 gems or you can turn in four late naras at any point and get like 130 something like that so 100 and, oh you get 180 for doing the weekly it looks like you get 155 for the for the other exchange maybe not wait no two you get 155 for two of them for three of them you get 180. okay that's my, my mistake it says it right there on the thing okay and if you're wondering what those are they look like this okay this is what the concentrated boss ra has you're gonna need thousands of these things okay you need thousands and thousands and thousands of these things okay so like just start stockpiling them the earlier you can get the weekly done and start cashing in your your um your late naras the better off you're gonna be okay so now i'm gonna tell you which ones to pen first okay first of all your weapons thanks to pearl abyss are basically already done you're gonna do your pen kudum very important you can leave it at tet reform four almost the same thing as pen i recommend just kind of going all the way but like you can do that um you can guarantee pen your kudum first that's only gonna be like three and a half billion it's really cheap guys don't like that's super super cheap so just knock that out and you're gonna look at your armor sets okay the first pen that i recommend doing in your armor sets based on how the game currently functions is your is your glove slot okay you should pen that you should do the guaranteed pen system get to your pen gloves okay get to your pen gloves okay as far as the other two pens go i recommend getting the helmet next okay all right so you're gonna do guaranteed pen armor or, i mean um gloves then you're gonna do your guaranteed pen helmet whether you want to do um Gaiats or griffins is up to you most people choose griffins but like it is what it, it doesn't doesn't really matter just of what i'm about to explain okay the gloves i mean the, the boots you can kind of leave for a while the boots you can leave for a while just leave them at tet we're not gonna worry about them quite yet at this stage once you've kind of finished up your pens you're also going to be starting on another thing that jatina has for you which is called the jatina pen accessories okay yeah that's right the game's going to gift you two pen accessories for the low low cost of 20 billion silver <laughs> okay when you hit i you're going to click on this little um this little icon this old moon support Okay, and you're gonna have your choice of three different pen accessories. Okay, these are guaranteed. Okay, and there's a guaranteed support right here, and there's an exchange right here, so you can trade one for the other when you need to. Okay, you get four free exchanges, so you can't fuck it up more than four times. Okay, um, they're really easy to get. New players will be able to get all of these items very, very quickly and just kind of work through them. The black stones and the old moon catalyst will be the two things that you're worried about most, but they also require Jonas fragments and magical shards, so just bear that in mind all those sealed magical black stones you're getting all those yona fragments just save those you're gonna need them for this you get two pen accessories okay you get to choose which ones of these there are okay you can build a pen crescent ring okay a pen narc earring or a mistake okay do not make a mistake all right just don't don't even look at it it doesn't exist okay like these are the two things that typically people are gonna go with a lot of people are gonna try to force feed you this bullshit about the, how the pen tongue rat earring is better for one thing or another that shit okay you're gonna do two pen crescent earrings early on and you're gonna like it then late game in your build you can transition to narc earrings when you don't need the crescents anymore as we will discuss okay but generally speaking you want to do the crescent ring okay if you do end up making a tongue rat earring not necessarily the end of the world you can sit on it until you get your distos and then trade them over to this but most of the time when people get the tongue rat earring, they have the same they have the same thought. I don't I don't have to build distos if I have a pen. Yes, you do. OK, yes, you do. You're an idiot. I, nobody cares. OK, you're a moron. Where tens of thousands of players came before you. You are not the chosen one. No one gives a shit. So you're going to put two pen crescent rings on. OK, at least get your Jatina to Tet. OK, you can at least get your Jatina to Tet. All right. That way you have a tet crescent on here a pen kaposha which is equivalent to a tet crescent ring on in this slot here all right now you can see okay well you're at 598 gear score what's it time for next blue i'm really enjoying the systems of the game it's time to backpedal and have zero fun okay so we're gonna click on this tab right here this is your adventure logs tab it's important to understand that the other adventurers are praying for you while you do these adventure logs okay this is going to suck all right, but you have to do it. There is no way around this, okay? Just get your rosary beads together, 
turn on one of Blue Squadron's YouTube videos, shameless plug, and just get it done. Okay, just get it done. I call it cleaning your room. So if you ever hear people say, clean your room, that's because it came from here. All right, you got to get this done. Watch these stats. Watch 598 gear score. Watch 278 AP awakening. Oh my, what the holy shit. And all it's going to cost you is all of your sanity and your virginity. Okay. Uh, well, actually, it's the opposite of your virginity. You're going to go back to being, you're going to be very chaste while you do your adventure logs. A abstinence is is really the only answer while you're doing these adventure logs. It's it's kind of miserable, but it's really good. Honestly, they could they should put it in educational courses at school. It's way better education than uh, Pastor Dave taught me. Um, Okay, so you're going to get your adventure logs done. If you want help with these adventure logs, there's plenty of guides out there. I personally recommend Evil Do Us Harm, but you can also watch... Hello, guys. Welcome back to Chris Molly channel. Okay, to enjoy watch my video. Don't be target time stop. Okay, like, you can watch anyone you pick. Anyone you pick. Chris Bali's guides are good. Evil Do Us Harm's guide is good. Um, if you're not into the video stuff, you can go to BDO Foundry. That's fine, too. No big deal. All right. No big deal, but they're, they're all fantastic guides. I don't have any um, uh, journal guides on my channel because they constantly change how they work and they're immediately going to be outdated in most cases. But like other other people have kept them reasonably up to date. OK, so Quark Tollies is the first one you want to do. The rest of them, again, we're praying for you. OK, good luck, especially the, the Dokebi chest. You do not have to do the Dokebi chest right away. That is pain and suffering. But you should get these done at some point. I'm just going to go ahead and check them all. Right around the time that you're hitting the 616 gear score mark, that's when you want to do it. And I know what you're thinking. But Blue, I hit 600 gear score a long time ago. My gear score now is 898. How in the f Like, what are you talking about? How are you getting this? No, your gear score is your highest AP plus your DP, okay? You don't add the two APs together. Why? We have no idea, okay? It would just make things easier for being on. But this is your actual gear score. Okay, highest AP plus your DP. All right. Now, we talked about Jatinas. We talked about getting your pens. At this point, it's time to finish both Jatinas. Bam. Bam. Okay. And you can make the other Jatina a Narc. Or you can make your, um, your Kaposha. You can make it a Pen Kaposha earring now. Okay, because now you have two Pen Kapo uh, pen Crescent Ring. All right. Look at this. Guess what? It's also a time to upgrade your, your Light Stones. Right around the time you're hitting level 62, guys, or 63, honestly. You should hit level 63, and then you can start looking at new lightstone setups. Technically, you could do it at 62 as well. You're probably just not going to be the grind zone that's going to matter until that point, okay? The first thing that you need to do is you need to get three predations. Still the same monster damage, okay? Okay, and what we call an iridescent lightstone right there at the top. Okay. three predations in an iridescent you can see that it gives you a lot of extra monster damage no matter where you're grinding this is really good this is a generalized lightstone setup that will work at any grind zone in the game it's also relatively cheap really easy peasy okay really really easy peasy right around this time is when you're going to want to start putting coffers in your gear for the first time what are coffers these are these little yellow yanks that you're going to hate a lot okay coffers look like this all right, you're going to need tens of thousands of them. Okay, so let's get to work. All right, you're going to coffer us. You basically just put them in your gear. Okay, you just enhance. It's enhancing your gear, but it's guaranteed enhancement. You just have to have a certain number of coffers and the coffers level goes up. As the coffers level goes up, so does your gear score. Easy peasy. Okay, just takes a really long time to get them. Okay, start putting coffers in your gear. You need to put C6 in each of your armor pieces. Okay, somewhere around here. Oh my god, you've got a lot of DP. Congratulations, we're going to take it all away. Okay, somewhere around this C6 marker. And a lot of players like to uh, get a dead god at this point too. And that's not necessarily a bad idea. Okay, so I'm going to recommend that you do it here. All right, you can put these at C5 or C4 if you want to. The dead god, in order to get your dead god, which is your end game armor set that you're never going to deviate from again. Um... You need to get your coffers level to coffers level 10 on each of your armor pieces. And then you take what we call a flame. There's flames for the gloves. There's flames for the boots. There's flames for the every everything has its own flame. Okay. Each of the four different armor sets has four different flames. For them. Okay. Just get the flame. You 
put them together in a quest line and bada bing bada boom you've got dawn's gloves now when you get your dawn's gloves or when you get your dead god for the first time you're gonna have a choice do i want blue or do i want green okay if you're an evasion class you want green if you're a damage reduction class you want blue okay if you're colorblind just take your best guess all right it'll be fine no big deal worst case scenario somebody calls you stevie wonder ain't the end of the world okay um you're gonna trade this up for this getting these to duo is absolutely free you can quote me on it okay i'm just kidding it is kind of it's, it's not very expensive duo is really not super hard okay you're gonna get it to pry immediately and then you're gonna put it in duo okay a lot of people like to get to this point and then and then go for distos okay and this time in this guide i'm very specifically going to tell you to go for distortion earrings before you go for your veils art okay because it's just better ap bang for your buck um if you're wondering why distortion earrings are so good you're getting 18 ap for the earring and you're losing four dp that's right your dp actually goes down when you put a distortion earring on that's why your dp has to be pretty high before you put them on well why would you do this at all why wouldn't you just go for a tongue wrap it's because of how the game works don't feel like you're some guru idiot okay where oh i have the tongue grad oh i've done the math no shut up okay all of the other players have done this for you already okay distortion earrings are absolutely the way you should go because it's way harder way way harder to get ap than it is dp dp is really easy to get so the fact that it it, it you lose 40 p no one cares okay because the ap on these earrings is so high it helps you grind at higher level spots much much sooner than you normally would be able to with other earrings okay this is going to help you make silver per hour like way faster okay and it's going to help you progress faster as a result so distortion earrings are the must must have go-to item for both evasion and damage reduction classes you're gonna need distortion earrings like it's gonna hurt worse if you're a dr class if you're an evasion class nobody cares because all the all it's taking away damage reduction not evasion so if you're an evasion class, distos are an objective W for you. Because you rely on evasion anyway. Taking away a little damage reduction isn't going to hurt you very much. Okay, easy peasy. All right. Okay, at this point, you'll notice that your DP is back down at 355. By the way, part of the reason I'm telling you to progress in this fashion is because you're going to hit certain grind zones and I'm getting you to those grind zone cutoffs. I'm not really going into it, but I'm getting you to those grind zone cutoffs as quickly as I can and as reasonably I can, as I can and as cost efficiently as I can each time. Okay. So, and if you're wondering where you should be grinding at any point in time, I have a where to grind guide. Check that out too. Easy peasy. Um, okay. At this point, we're getting Vel's heart. Vel's heart is pretty hard to get unless you get super carried. Uh, Vel is a monster just never puts out for anything. It's really annoying. Um, you'll notice that you have 305 awakening AP at this point. If you have your pen black star here, you will have 303, I think. Yeah, you'll have 303 if you have your main hand. So you're not quite going to be at the 305 bracket if you're a succession class. Okay. But if you're an awakening, yeah, you have slightly more AP. Easy. Big W. Big W. Okay. Uh, if you're wondering how to get these two extra AP here, you can conference your Kudum or you can do what I'm about to tell you next. Okay. But at this point, you're at 654 gear score. It's time to stop looking at gear for just a moment. Okay, I'm gonna move this back to awakening for now. It's important to stop looking at gear for just a moment. You need to revisit your artifact setup, okay? Your artifact setup at this point, right around 650, 660 gear score. This is when you wanna transition over to the best artifacts in the game. These are called Kabuas. These are gonna be very expensive, but they are extremely good. They will help you grind end game spots a lot faster. Um, and a lot more safely. You'll notice monster damage reduction plus 20. That is really good. Okay, on both of them. That's 40 monster damage reduction on both of them. So if you're struggling to stay alive, getting Kaboo is a little bit earlier in your gear. Not the worst thing in the world. Okay. Dark Knights, for example, are like farts in the wind. They're super squishy. So like Dark Knights can go for Kaboo's a little bit sooner, like around 630 if they want to. When you upgrade to Kaboo's artifacts, you need to also change your lightstone setup. Okay. There are multiple different lightstone setups that you can go for. All right. I'm going to teach you the few that um, 
are generally the most recommended. And then I'm going to tell you what the best is. Okay. The most recommended are the three predations and the iridescent. I don't want to see those in Kabuas. Okay. You need to be moving to species damage at this point. Either one, you need to have species damage, which is what most players are going to go for because it's very easily obtainable. In this case, I think rage is, um, no, not rage. Um, what's the human damage one called guys? What's human damage called? Blight. Thank you. Okay, so three blights and an iridescent. Thank you, guys. Three blights and an iridescent. Okay, this will give you human damage. This is really good at a spot called Giant's Post, which is one of the best grind zones in the game at this gear score. It's probably the best grind zone. Pretty uncontestedly, the best grind zone in the game at 305, 355. Yeah, ain't gonna go wrong with it. Okay, the human damage in that is gonna be really, really crazy good. Okay, if you're looking for... Um, demi-human damage. Orcs is demi-human damage. And while you're grinding orcs, you can just upgrade to demi-human. Uh, what is the demi-human one called, guys? Roar. Okay. Roar. Thank you. Thank God for chat. Boom. Okay, so you do three demi-humans. And an iridescent, just like the other ones. It's always one iridescent and then three of the other thing. Okay. This is really good for orcs. Okay, so if you like grinding orcs uh, or the demi-human spots in the game, there you go. If you're wondering the difference between the spots, again, that's all in my where to grind guide. I'm not going to go into that right now. Um, there's also comma Sylvia damage. And that is, guys, what's the comma damage? Fallen, thank you. Sorry, I, I, somebody had already typed it. I didn't see. Okay, you do three Fallens and an Iridescent. So you have, if you like grinding in comma Sylvia, a lot of mobs in this game are Comicillia mobs. Even if you're not in Comicillia, you would be surprised. You would be surprised. The comma damage um, is really, really good. Species damage goes over the cap of the AP zone that you're at. So if you're at Orcs and you're at the soft cap for AP, the monster damage, if you have demi-human damage at Orcs, it will go over that and you'll clear the Orcs faster because you have the species damage. This is why species damage is really good. However, it's very specific to those grind zones. Okay. Human, important to note that human damage will also help you in PvP. So if you're grinding giants and you get the human damage set, you also have your PvP lightstone set up. Congratulations, easy peasy, all done. All right, so the other way you can go with this, if you don't want to do species damage and you don't want to be tied to one grind zone, maybe you like grinding in a lot of grind zones, and you're going to have to do this eventually anyway, you're going to have to put pre-orders on something called a strike, or you're going to have to pull for one regardless. If you type strike into the marketplace, uh... Stand by. Ain't no way. There it is. Okay, it's right down here. There are 5 billion silver apiece. Okay. If you have one of these, you have to put a pre-order on it, which means you have to float 5 billion silver. You have to put a pre-order on it. It sucks. But all in-game artifact setups require strikes. It sucks. But it is what it is. You'll put an order down. You will get it within what, guys? A week or two, probably? Usually. Sometimes it could take a much longer time, but like usually you get it within a week or two. Um, and you need two of those if you're going to make the best lightstone set in the game, but you need one of them if you're going to make like a reasonable set. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to recommend Vicious Shadows to you. Um, you can look up Crocodile 2, Vicious Shadows, whatever. All of those strike setups, you can look up the one that you specifically want. Back attack, fall da or back attack damage, down attack damage, special attack damage. All of it's going to require a strike in most cases. So like... Just, just, just check out which lightstone set would be best for you. But generally speaking, the biggest hurdle is going to be getting that strike. The rest of it is a piece of cake. You just buy the three lightstones that you. Need. Okay. Uh, watch your back does not require a strike, but is a really good setup. Um, so you can look at watch your back too. Again, species damage you can kind of just use wherever. But uh, again, it's very specific. Very specific. Okay. Um, double strike, double rage. Um, yeah. So the best lightstone setup in the game is called All Out Attack. Uh, and it is exactly what he just said right there. You do two strikes. That's 10 billion right there. Double Rage as well. These are the APs. Okay. This is going to give you All Out Attack. All Out Attack is easily the best lightstone setup in the game for PvE. In most cases, it does make you a lot squishier. So you need to make sure you have enough DP to get away with it. But it's really good. It's usable at all the spots in the game. And it'll help get you to those AP thresholds much faster. It's just really expensive, so you don't necessarily have to do that at this point. 
I'm just going to leave it here because at some point you're going to want to transition to it. Okay. Um, it's right around 650 gear score. Honestly, 630 to 650 gear score, 660 gear score. This is when you're going to want to put what we call cups on your accessories. These are enchantments for your accessories. Okay, there's enchantment and then there's an enhancement. Okay, this is pushing your gear up to the next level. This is enchanting your gear with some sort of spell that makes it stronger. Okay, so like in this case, the only thing the the necklace, you should always just put the HP on the necklace piece of cake. All right, it's, it's, it's like 150 million for 150 HP piece of cake. Okay, the belt. Um, there are two options for the belt. You can have seven damage or six damage reduction, or you can have three AP. You're going to choose the damage reduction. If you pick the AP, you're an idiot. Okay. You're going to pick the damage reduction and you're going to like it. All right. And if you don't know which one to pick, you're definitely picking the damage reduction. But what if I'm an evasion class? The damage reduction. Okay. It's the three AP is just not worth it. Okay. At all. All right. The rings. This is very controversial. If you are strictly PVE. You never want to PVP in your life and you do not care. You need to put the crit damage on your rings. Okay. Crit damage on the rings. All right. Crit damage on the rings. For everyone else that is going to do pretty much any amount of PVP, especially cap PVP, you're going to want to put the HP and uncapped PVP. You're going to want to put the HP on your rings. Okay. Especially if you're a DR class or a shield class. Like if you're a guardian, um, or you're a warrior, yeah, you gotta have HP on your on your ring. Okay, like the making DR DR becomes valuable because you have a big health pool. You want a big health pool if you're a damage reduction class. Evasion, you can kind of make the case where you know what I mean. Like Dark Knights, for example, can do crit damage on the rings and get away with it. Um, she's already really squishy as it is. The extra HP helps her trade a little bit, but the crit damage directly helps her damage. So like it's not the end of the world. So at this point, uh, by the way, the uh, the earrings. Also have um, upgrades on them. You do not need to do these right away, okay? These are 5 billion for like three AP. It's like whatever. It's not that big of a deal and there's no options. So you're just gonna put the AP on here, okay? Just gonna put the AP on here, no problem. When you have the opportunity. I'm gonna leave it there. You don't need to do those right away. But you should try to get your belt, your necklace and your two rings right around this time uh, is, what, is when you wanna do it, okay? Um, now you need to start cranking out DP like it's nobody's business. So in my opinion, this is kind of the time when you can finish your second dead God, which can either be the helmet or the necklace, or I mean the helmet or the, the chest piece. Most people are going to go for the chest piece. So I'll demonstrate that you push that to duo easy peasy. Okay. Once you're at two duo dead gods, you need to pump these to pen. Okay. The muskins at that point need to pump the pen. Do you buy them or do you use the guaranteed pen system? Usually they're going to be about the same price either way. That's basically where the market has gone. In previous guides, the market was really far one way or another when I made the guide. Right now, the market is basically the same. I would say it takes about 16 billion silver to make your third. Um, eh, it's like 12 to 15 billion, right? For your third pen armor, right? 12 to 15 billion or so. Um, and if you want to look at muskins on the marketplace, if you don't believe me, there it is. Okay. So it's basically going to be the same price either way. Personally, the guaranteed pen system gives you your name on your gear. So like, I'm just going to recommend that you do that, but like, it's up to you. Okay. But this is right around the time you need to pen your muskins. Okay. Again, we're just going to crank DP. You're going to put your, uh, you're going to put your enchantment on your exalted Vel's heart now. Okay. This is, um, there's a ways to upgrade your Vel's heart. They're cups, kind of like the accessories. Okay. You're just going to put them on, put them on your Vel's heart. It's going to give your Vel's heart four DP. Awesome. Sweet. You gonna pull that Zen Z? I am the second the patch comes up. Yeah. Okay. Um, at this point, you're going to finish your Griffins. All right. I'm sorry. Your Labresca. Okay. Easy peasy. Everything's a duo. Get your pen. Um, you got your pen muskins here. You're going to put your pen muskins probably at C9. You notice we've been working on DP for a while and that's because your AP is 305. Okay. Because your AP is 305. If you're a pre-awakening class or you're a succession class, mm, somewhere in here, it's going to deviate. You're going to deviate a little bit. So I'm going to show you. Okay. Because you'll notice you're only 303. Okay? Why do these numbers matter? Why does the 2 AP matter? I should have explained this before. Um, there are hidden AP brackets in BDO. Okay. There are hidden AP and DP brackets in Black Desert Online. Um, 
right here. So depending on what your sheet AP is in this left column here, you will just have extra hidden AP as you go. Okay, so 261, if you have 261 AP, for example, you're gonna have 18 more AP. It's not just one AP you're getting from 260 to 261. You're getting 19. You get the sheet one plus the 18 non-sheet AP. It's a big difference, right? Some of these bracket cutoffs are really big. So like, I'm trying to teach you, like, yeah, these are. this is when you need to go for AP. This is the AP you need to be aiming for. 301 and 305 are very, very big AP cutoff brackets. Um, Right here, okay? Seven AP and this one's six AP. Really good. Promise with you at this point, you're like, wait, that's not 18. I know because it slows down as you get, slows down as you get higher. Okay, but like, it is what it is. It is what it is, okay? Um, actually, it's seven AP and it's eight AP. I apologize, my math wrong. I'm an idiot, okay? Seven AP and eight AP, which is a lot. You'll notice that the AP brackets beyond this, they kind of go down, it's not as good. Not as good. These are the last two really, really good brackets, um, cost efficiency wise for AP, which is why I'm trying to get you to 305. Okay. If you're at 303, you're still okay. You can sit at that for a little while. There's two ways to get yourself to 305. You can either conference your Kudum to C14. Okay. That's going to give you two AP. You get one AP every seven levels on your offhand. This is a lot of money. This, this is many billions of silver, but it's guaranteed. You cannot this up all right the alternative is to do like a pen necklace okay or a pen belt all right i do not recommend this route for reasons i will get to in a moment okay um all right i recommend just conferencing your kudum for the two extra ap all right for the two extra AP, you should just conference your Kudum. You're going to have to conference your Kudum anyway. Just get it done. I also recommend that if you're going to do it, you have some extra conference laying around. C15 is going to give you four more accuracy, so you might as well do it. No sheet stats, but it will give you four more accuracy. So if you're a succession class, you are going to have to stop off and conference your Kudum at some point. Okay, and that's just how it's going to go. All right. Um, if you're an awakening class, congratulations. Um, you're already 305. It doesn't matter. Okay. It doesn't matter. All right, so we're going to go back to awakening. And we're going to pretend that we're in awakening class. Again. All right. Now, you have to make a very important decision. In the late game of Black Desert Online, there is only one group of accessories that matters. Okay. It used to be in these guides, I would recommend people to do various different, like AP routes, Pen Ogre, Pen Layton, Tet Debo, and I would never recommend the Tet Debo. Um, because the difference in cost between the two and when you were getting them, a lot of factors that goes into it. Now, it's going to spare you the trouble. You're going to get Tet Debos. You are never going to worry about another accessory in your life. Everything else is completely irrelevant. Do not get a pen belt. Do not get a pen necklace. We are just going to do the Debarekas. You understand? Only Debos. Okay, because that's all it is going to be late game anyway. Um, So, when it comes time to get your pen necklace... All right, or your pen equivalent necklace because Tet Debareka is equivalent to essentially a pen ogre. It's one less AP, but you can enhance it again and get six more AP. So it's going to be five greater uh, down the road. That's what Debos are just better than everything. Okay, when it comes time to get your necklace, you get a Tet Debo. Okay, it's going to be more expensive than the pen ogre. The reason is you have to do this anyway. You just have to do this anyway. There is literally no way around it. You, you, you have to go this route. The developers have chosen this. There are no options. You do not get to choose. This is your gear path. Okay. You're going to do a Tet Debo necklace. You're going to do a Tet Debo belt. Okay. At a certain point, the reason Debos are really, really good is because you can see on here, it says there's a three set effect. Okay. Plus 12 hidden AP. This would be why Debos are really good. In addition to giving the best sheet stats in the game, they also give you more bonuses for just having more Debos on. So like, we're trying to rush you to tet Debos across the board, okay? So like, boom, okay? Bada bing, bada boom, all right? Three tet Debos, necklace, belt, ring, in this order. The reason I'm telling you to do this in this order is because if you grind this out, and then you grind this out, you'll probably get this 
as you go. Okay. Because of how you get uh, rings in the game, you will get rings as you grind for your belt, as you grind for your necklace, as you grind for your earrings. Okay. So like, I don't really have to worry about that too much. And the earrings kind of suck. I'm going to be honest with you. Debo earrings kind of suck. But if you can get to this three set effect, you're gaming. Okay. You're gaming. All right. All right. Now, before you get, before you get your pen belt and your pen necklace or, or your, your earring here, I mean, your ring, I apologize. Okay. So before you do these other debos, I know I just told you to do that, but before you do this, okay, you're on this Kaposha here. You get your necklace. This puts you at 309. This is the next bracket cutoff for AP. See? Blue squadron crisp. Okay. All right. Easy piece. Um, all right. Um, you get your tet necklace. Now it's time to get your boots. Okay, now you have to go get your dead god boots. Again, make sure you pick the correct color. All right, easy peasy. This is right around the time that you're gonna wanna go ahead and upgrade your Kabooas to all out attack or whatever. Um, like your 700 gear score, you need to have end game crystals, end game everything. I recommend upgrading your crystal set right around the time that you hit orcs. You should upgrade it to like the mid, mid tier crystal set. And then right around the time that you're hitting giants um, or like right around 620, 630 gear score, you're going to mid tier crystals are okay. Right around 650, 660 gear score. That's when you want to upgrade to the full gear and steer to the full ball, full bore, everything. Get, get your good crystals. Okay. Um, I have a crystal guide. If you want to see that, um, you can go check that out it's in a different video. Um, okay. So we're going to pretend that you have your, your, your start on your Debo grind as painful as this is. Okay. Uh, so you've got your three tet Debos. Now what? Okay. They handed away something in the game called a hammer. All right. We're also going to pretend that this is C15. Okay. Because if you're a succession class, you've already coffered it at this point. If you're an awakening class, you want to coffer it now because DP also gives you brackets. Okay. DP also gives you a bunch of bonus DR for just having more DP. So even if you're an evasion class, you want to have a lot of DP on. It's really, really good. All right. It's just like AP. Okay. 401 is one of the, well, now there's more brackets, but like 401 is one of the big cutoffs. So you want to just C15 this. Okay. Now you're 404. Okay. You're starting to get up there in DP, right? Gives you more survivability in PVE, PVP. You're doing a lot better, etc. Okay. Oh, I forgot about the, oh, I forgot about add-ons for your, for your, um, for your weapons. Okay. So there's two things in the game that are extremely important, but people don't know when to build them. Okay, so there's Garmoth Heart. And there's Aranda Heart. And there's Kudam Heart. Okay, at 600 gear score, around the time that you're doing your journals, okay, you need to get a Karanda's Heart and a Kudam Heart. Okay, it's going to give you an extra crystal slot. It's also going to give you a bunch of extra HP. It costs like very small amounts of silver. They're really easy. Just buy it off the marketplace. Easy peasy. Okay. They're basically substituted for Garmoth's heart. Okay. You're going to equip them to your awakening and offhand respectively. All right. Hey, okay. Karanda goes on the awakening. Kudum goes on the offhand. All right. Easy peasy. Super lemon squeezy. You can also, if you get a Nuver, okay. Um, oh, we should talk about Nuver a little bit. Cause this is around the time that people are going to be looking at Nuver anyway. If you're a damage reduction build, there is another offhand that you absolutely are going to need. It's called a Nuver. You'll notice that you have way higher AP. And it has DR on the weapon instead of evasion. It has a lot less DP though. So you notice your DP went down by a lot. Your AP went up by a lot. If you're a damage reduction class, you are going to need a Nuver for PVP. Flat out. In, in PVE, you will always use Kudum. That's why I taught you to build Kudum from the beginning. You will always use Kudum no matter what in damage reduction and evasion. Always Kudum in PvE. In PvP, evasion is still going to use a Kudum and DR is going to use a Nuver. Okay, so you're going to need to get that Nuver at some point. Doesn't have to be Coffrest, but you are going to have to get it. I recommend putting a Karan or a um, a Kudum heart in it when you get it. Just just kind of tack it in there. It's like 150 mil, 300 mil. It's a piece of cake. A piece of cake. Um, okay. Um, at 700 or so gear score, 680 to 700 or so gear score. This is right around the time that you want to transition to making sure that you have your Garmoth's heart. Garmoth's heart is going to give you yet another crystal slot on top of the one that Karanda already gave you. 
Karma's Heart gives you two total crystal slots. Karana's only gives you one. Kudum's Heart versus um, uh, a Gar again, another Garmoth. You need two Garmoth's Hearts. Okay, one goes in your Awakening. That's the more important one. The other one goes in your Offhand. It's going to give you a massive amount of HP. Okay, it's going to make your Offhand fiery. Fiery. That's around the time you want to get your Armas Heart. Okay. Um, at this point, um, you need to consider how you're going to proceed. This is like now you're in end game. We're, we're talking about end game um, setups now. All right. So like, okay, what am I going to do? I recommend pushing at least two of your armor sets to try before you start growing for your pen Debo grind. Okay. Um, there are things current on current pass. There's things in the game called hammers. You're going to hear people talk about these a lot. Okay. Jay's hammer of precision. These are guaranteed accessory and enhancements. They, it's not guaranteed success. It's guaranteed not to downgrade. So when you tap your Debereka, instead of using cron stones for it and having it downgrade, oh God, oh no, you can just tap it and it's guaranteed not to downgrade. It's not guaranteed to upgrade, but it's guaranteed not to downgrade. Super, super useful. Crazy useful. And the reason they're useful is if you use cron stones on these things, you end up going down to a tri necklace. Oh, that's not good. That sucks. Right? You end up going down to a do. Oh, God. Oh, man. We're in shambles. Right? Like, you use cron stones on these, it's going to be a little rough. Now, the hammers are supposed to go away in November. I will keep it a buck with you. I don't know if there's any way they can possibly remove the hammers in November and still keep their jobs. Okay? Because here's the thing. There's 2,600 hammers sitting on the marketplace. Those are all new players selling their 27 billion silver hammer. Okay. If they don't get their money and the hammer just disappears, they will have effectively robbed 2,663 new players of their silver. And that will feel really bad for the, for the player base. If they just give those new players um, if they just give those new players the money and just act like they got sold and just take them away, well, congratulations. Now you've just inflated your marketplace by trillions of silver. Okay, that makes sense. This is supposed to go away in November. My guess is that they will probably push that date or they'll come out with another upgraded version of it and like we all get it again. Okay, as a new player, you're going to get this really early. I highly recommend selling it and buying more gear. Follow my gear guide and just buy more gear. You can buy coffers with it as the best investment. Just, just a bunch of coffers, easy piece, okay? Like, or you can do your guaranteed pens. That's what I did with it on EU, okay? Yeah, on EU, there's 3.6K sitting on the market. And you guys see my point that like, if they took those away, all of those players that are waiting to sell, that, that would be like robbing them. It'd be like false advertising. Like they had people come back to the game so that they got this 28 billion and then they don't get it. Like people would get really upset. People would get really upset. Um, so like hammers will very likely be around whether they give us a new one in the future or not remains to be seen as of this patch you do have hammers I recommend just hammering your way to a pen necklace to a pen belt to a pen ring once you're at th triple pen debo like this okay you need to try out the rest of your armors easy peasy we're croning the crap out of those and you're off to the races what do I do now blue now that I've got my three set Debos and I'm sick of the Debo grind, I'm glad you asked, Tuvala Timmy. Now you're going to get more Debos. Wait, but I already... More. More Debos. You're going to get your other Pen Debo ring and you're going to get a Pen Debo uh, earring. Okay. At this point, you are officially done with your Debareka grind. Okay. Oh, also, yeah, you can't hammer the rings, but nobody cares because you have your pen crescent as a backup. So if the ring downgrades, who gives a shit? Okay, you can just put your pen crescent from Jatina on. All right. At this stage, you'll notice that when you start replacing your your uh, ring slots, um, your Jatinas, you can get your pen narcs. Go ahead and get your pen narcs. Pen narcs are great in-game earrings for shield classes. Warrior, Valkyrie, Draconia, um, Nova. These are great classes with Narc earrings, and every class in the game loves Narc earrings at really high-end grind zones. They give you more durability. They give you Kama Sylvia damage. You already reach the AP, AP cap anyway. They go over the cap. Narcs are incredible. So you're transitioning your Jatinas to both double Narcs in game anyway, just so we're clear. Ideally, this is a Pendisto. Okay, this is the ideal PvE late game PvE setup. 
Okay. Pend this is the most AP bang for your buck. Pendis though has more AP than the Debareka. Remember before I told you it's terrible. Okay. 19 AP against 21. Yeah, you lose five DP for it, but you also have extra accuracy on this. It's got four extra accuracy on top of it. So like, it's just better. It's just better. Okay, and who wants to do another Debo grind? Not me and not you by the end of this. Okay. Um. Oh yeah, I forgot about the Black Star. Okay, before you go get, before you get your pen Debos, you need to pen your other Black Star. Thank you. Sorry guys, I apologize. I forgot about it. Before you have three set Debos, okay? Right before you're like, okay, it's time to go get pen Debos. You need to make sure you have a couple tri armors and you need to pen your other black star. It's just that simple. Easy peasy. Okay. Um, you never need to get the pen black star sub weapon. Pen black star sub weapon is the equivalent of C20 Kudum, so you can just f fill out the C20 Kudum. Kudum is technically marginally better in PvP. Black star is like two monster damage better in PvE. No one cares okay like the, it's not gonna matter okay it's not gonna make the difference on your grind so it's easier to just do c20 kudum because you're already at c15 at that point okie dokie um now this is now we're getting into giga end game so you're gonna tet your armors okay and you're gonna start working on some accuracy accessories where you need them i highly highly recommend that your first accuracy accessory be a dawn earring Okay, so you get a five set Debo with the Dawn Earring and PvP is crazy good. That shit's crazy, bro. Insane. Okay. A lot of people like to do the three set Debo with three accuracy accessories. That's fine too. But if uh, now we're going to start trading out builds a little bit, guys. I'm going to talk a little bit about what the late game DR build looks like and the kind of the cool things that you can do with this. Let's say that you're a Valkyrie. Okay. Or you're a Draconia. Okay. You really, really like Narc Earrings. Narc earrings are awesome. Okay. And you want, you want the three set Debo. Okay. A lot of Valkyries, a lot of end game DR sets love these Kadri. Remember, oh, they love Kadri rings. Oh boy. Kadri rings are so good. You're going to put HP on those. Kadri rings are really good. Okay. Now keep in mind, you'll notice you're sacrificing a pretty tremendous amount of AP for this. But here's the thing you're going to have a new Veron. Okay. So you're still at 295. All right. Well, we'd rather be 301, right? We'd rather be 301. So you can still take this narc off and put on like, I don't know, something more recent. You can put on a Dawn or something. Well, I guess you can put on a Disto. You can put your Disto on. Okay. And you'll notice that you're exactly 301. Exactly 301. Okay. There's a lot of different ways that people play with this. Cadres are an excellent option in the late game for DR builds. Um, double pen narc is definitely the way that most people go on shield classes in the game on hardcore dr classes but the problem is you can't do double narc double cadre because like you end up with not enough ap All right you can theoretically do this but like you don't have enough ap to get shit done okay so like it's gonna be a little rough if you do this okay also if you do this you're gonna want a different lightstone setup you're gonna want like the full dr um setup okay Sovereign will change this. Yes, Sovereign weapons are going to come out. And in the event that you are watching this when Sovereign weapons are out, but before I make the next guide for this, um, you want to start building your, so upgrade your Sovereign weapon somewhere around the time that you get your first pen Debo. Okay, you can technically do it right before your pen Debo, but it's going to cost you another pen Black Star, which is a little rough. Okay, that's going to be a little rough. And it's probably just better to just go get the Debo first. Um, but like, I'll have to do the exact, um, calculations on that when it comes out. Okay. Um, it's possible. Honestly, you could do it with three set Debo and then grab your sovereign weapon and enhance it as far as you can. It's still going to cost you a lot of money though. It's still going to cost you a lot of money. So we'll see that remains to be seen with the sovereign weapons, but like, that's generally, I wouldn't worry about that. So you're like 720 gear score. Um, and I would still follow this path early game knowing that you're gonna have to get the sovereign later okay all right um let's talk a little bit about um evasion let's talk about evasion okay what are you gonna do end game for evasion right okay evasion builds really really like to wear the centaur belt really good really good 
you're gonna have a kudam on okay so just bear bear in mind you will be wearing a kudam when you do this but you'll notice you can put a centaur on with four set demo and honestly you don't need this either okay you can technically do double pen disto with it if you really wanted to i recommend probably a dawn instead um but like you're still over the 305 bracket which is very critically important okay orc and rat is complete garbage do not build it okay you really do not want to build hybrid at this stage um or at any stage really problem with orc and rat is you're trading off like a small amount of ap for a very small amount a negligible amount of evasion centaurs a pen centaur has 60 evasion on it a pen orc and rad belt has 10. okay right you don't care about these extra ap right yeah i have a lot more ap yeah well you don't care about those extra ap brackets though all you care about is you can stay above 305 you can stay above 309 that's really what you're concerned about 60 evasion is going to be way more valuable to you okay all right um this is like the evasion end game you can do a lot of different cool stuff with your earrings as well um but like this is kind of what you want to look for for the evasion end game here the three set debo the centaurs you can do the five set debo even with the centaur on you can do double um pen earrings what it's gonna take you're gonna have to go get your sixth pen uh debo that's gonna suck but like you can do this and you will hit the 309 bracket um right here okay so this is what like the end game options are for evasion all right now we're gonna talk about full dp builds full dp builds in black desert online like shy shy builds full dp and a lot of other people like mystic right awakening witches build this um full dp builds are kind of in addition to what we just talked about okay so a full dp build is always evasion but what about dear no it's always going to be evasion okay because it relies all of the accessories rely very heavily on evasion you can do it with dr it's just not going to be quite as good okay so like the accessories you're looking for here are the ethereal earrings okay the rings you're looking for are you can do cadres but there's this new um the cloud the ocean haze rings pen ocean haze rings are crazy bro these are all evasion okay these are crazy good and then the necklace is a moonlit river necklace okay and you'll notice how high your dp gets all right oh in the end game for ap uh this is the alchemy stone when you have nothing left to do in the game you're gonna make this alchemy stone i'm not even gonna good luck it's gonna cost as much as everything else put together we're praying for you um dp memes are good with the resplendent alchemy stone of destruction this is realistically the best stone that you're gonna get some people like choice are carried and they have the up the upgraded version of this but like you exalt this this is what your alchemy stone looks like all right like this is what an end game oh and your um your offhand a lot of classes have a green offhand that is evasion in which is case it's called the um is it the bronze dagger no it's called the pear yeah it's the parrying dagger okay it's the parrying dagger and you can ultimate the parrying dagger okay ultimate parrying deck okay and then you can put c20 in it too and get a bunch of extra evasion you understand that you're off -hand. this is very important for a dp build you need to have an evasion offhand it's not even a question if you're going to go the dr route you can go cadres with a dr offhand but you're still you're just not going to be super tanky um but like you'll notice how much evasion it gives you because you 136 evasion at c20 pen getting it to pen is a joke it will cost you like two or three billion it's a complete joke okay so like don't be intimidated by this it also requires way less coffers than your normal gear so i wouldn't worry about that too much either um if you're a shy i'm fairly certain that the best offhand chat can correct me if i'm wrong is rosar okay i'm fairly certain it's the rosar of Clary um offhand i have one of these uh yeah right here pen ultimate rosar this is just in case i have to play my shy with evasion you'll notice it's got 90 evasion on it and it's not quite as good as the witches is but shy already has evasion passives that way outscale the witches anyway so really good really good um you could technically go for, for korea but like the benefit of going for rosar in a dp build is you can also do this 
For those of you that don't... Actually, wait. Did they take the passive off? Did they take the passive off of Rosar? Could have sworn they took the passive off. Nope. Nope. We're good. It says set effect. Ignore all. Resist plus 10%. Yeah, we're good. I see you're still doing this. Okay. So you don't have to have a main hand that's worth a shit. Nobody cares. All right. All right. I'll do... I'll roll the dice. I'm sorry. Sorry. Okay. You're a DP meme. You're not doing any damage. Okay. You need to give up on the idea of doing damage with this build. You're not going to do it. Nobody cares. You want to have like a plus one or a plus zero Rosar main hand because it gives you a two set effect of ignoring resistances. As a DP meme, your job is to be as disruptive as possible and as resilient as possible. Ignoring people's resistances helps you be very disruptive. Okay. You should wear both Rosars if you're going to do this. Okay. This is what a full end game DP build looks like. All right. Um, did I miss anything else on the DP? I think we're good. Um, I can briefly cover crystals real quick if I'm missing anything. Oh, yeah. Um, you're going to change these to... Um, people are kind of split on what artifacts and lightstones to run on DP memes. I personally run Blur. B-L-U-R or B-L-E-R. I forget what it was. But um, that gives you the maximum amount of evasion and, a, um, and DR. Um, it does take away all your resistances, but on Awakening Witch, it doesn't matter, right? Most people are going to want you to do blur. Okay. With DR artifacts. All right. With DR artifacts. Okay. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about crystals. And then I think, I think the guide's complete. Crystals. Really easy. This is what your end game crystal setup looks like. All right. Um, I will actually switch to my, my DK so that we can actually see what the hell is going on here. Um, this is what the end game setup looks like. I highly recommend just doing try versions of all of this. Your accessories, you can get the pen off and really easily. Um, try everything really cheap. Just get that. That's like the mid game DP setup. Okay. Trying to get like a, like a sharp black stone would probably be, I mean, a sharp, um, protection stone is also fine too. Um, but yeah, try everything. And then you can just kind of upgrade it as you're able to Just kind of upgrade as you're able to. Excellent question. Um, all right, crystals crystals um i have a special crystal guide so we're not going to spend too much time on this okay i'm going to show you what end game crystals look like this is end game human damage balls to the wall no defensive stats um pvp crystals okay and sometimes i sub some of this out for more accuracy okay but this is i have karmes i have red spirit crystals i'm just going to mouse over this is Ol olukas uh, these are uh, ultimate Macalods, Corrupteds, um, Visionary Elkars, um, another Karma here. These are uh, Viper, Red Battlefield Crystals, um, and then it's always move oh, move speed in the center. Always move speed in the center. I grind at Dekia Ash Forest a lot, so this your crystal setup is always going to be the same core thing. I have a crystal guide. Go check it out. I explain everything. I walk through all the crystals. It makes it really easy. I show you what a budget crystal setup looks like mid game end game everything okay but the core of your crystal setup is always exactly the same thing it's always exactly the same okay this setup right here this is the end game crystal setup four macalods um two akrods two decimations two rebellious two corrupted or two mysterious darkness depending on where you're at because you can only put on either or okay i have mysterious darkness on because i don't like Bro, I need as much defensive stats as I can get at Dekia Ash. Okay. Um, the extra three crystal slots. Um, the extra three crystal slots are entirely up to you. A lot of people like to slot in resistances depending on the grind spot that they're at. Okay. So that they can get to 100% resistance. So they don't get CC'd while they're grinding, which sucks. I'll admit. And nobody likes getting CC'd while they're grinding. So like you can see, I have a crypt crystal set up down here. That's got stun stiff resist on it. My normal one has knocked down bound resist on it. But like if you're, if you don't care about resistance and your balls to the wall, you're going to put on um, what we call powers, baby. Um, ancient magic crystal flame power right here. This little thing right here. You can slot in three powers. It's just five AP. You're just cranking AP out. Okay. And this is a really good build. If you, if you're not quite at the, like the AP cutoff for a spot, you can get there with just pumping powers into your, into your crystal setup. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. 
so this is very quickly what what uh crystals look like no i do not want to save it um this is what i have to change this don't this is capped pvp they just changed it so cap pvp um has capped hp as well so i need to revisit this also we talk about special attack evasion that's no longer a thing that is just flat hp now there's no more special attack evasion in the game so if you hear people talking about that um they are outdated uh we are went over the human damage this is what the hunting crystals look like okay um it's mastery life skill mastery if you're wondering why one is missing it's because i hunt on my mystic and she doesn't have a garmoth's heart so she doesn't have this extra crystal setup okay so it's all just mastery and then uh you should theoretically put crit in the center for this and then you should have back attack damage here and here okay um i don't know why this is oh it's because i lost my mysterious darkness crystal this is what this is what hunting looks like okay this is by the way combat exp is really good if i'm being power leveled or i need to level up a character every single one of these is combat exp this is a gear and steer here and it's just combat exp okay this is my life skilling crystals so it's just basically all mastery nobody cares and again crypt is just a it's another variation of the core build but with stun stiff freeze resist okay all right um i think i've pretty much covered everything so i do just want to say thanks so much for watching my guide guys if you have any questions put it in the comments uh and i will try to answer them i try to upgrade this guide every few months or update this guide every few months uh, based on the changes in the game because the game is always changing and what you need to build is also changing with it so um yeah just make sure you like subscribe comment on the video check out my other guides check out my live stream twitch.tv says blue squadron we're always doing something super fun there's two new youtube videos every day i promise you will be laughing i love you guys all